Hi there, welcome back to our YouTube channel. My name is Brittany with SMMP Reviews, and today we are going to review a medication called Warfarin. This medication may show up on your exam, so we're going to hit the major need to know points today in this video. However, if you're looking for a review of blood thinners or antiplatelet medications in general, I highly suggest our review courses. These courses will give you more in-depth understanding of these medications. All right, so warfarin is an anticoagulant that is often used to prevent blood clots in many scenarios, such as after a surgical procedure, after an artificial valve placement, or in cases of atrial fibrillation. It works by inhibiting the synthesis of vitamin K-dependent clotting factors. It is very important to closely monitor these patients while they're on warfarin to make sure that it's being used effectively and safely. The test that is used to monitor appropriate levels is the International Normalized Ratio, or the INR. Essentially, this measures how long it takes the blood to clot. The INR is a lab value that is important to know whether you're taking the AANP or the ANCC exam. So let's do a quick run through of the normal and therapeutic levels. A normal INR for someone who is not being treated with warfarin is around one or less. For someone who is being treated with warfarin, the goal therapeutic range is typically between two and three. If a patient has an artificial valve, the goal would be slightly higher at 2.5 to 3.5. When starting a patient on warfarin, these levels may need to be checked every few days or weekly at most. Once the patient is more stable on their dosage, the monitoring can extend to a typical frequency of every four to six weeks. Now there are several other medications that can interfere with the effectiveness to, of warfarin, so it is important to do a thorough medication reconciliation with the patient to make sure there won't be any drug interactions. Patients should also be educated about foods that are high in vitamin K. These are gonna be those green leafy vegetables like spinach, kale, collard greens, as well as some salad dressings and cooking oils. We don't wanna discourage a patient from eating leafy greens, but they should be aware that it can affect their levels if they eat too much and they should keep it at, at consistent amounts. Let's do a quick practice question here to apply what we've learned. A 76-year-old patient has started taking warfarin following a valve replacement. The INR level today is 6. The patient denied any active bleeding or new bruising. The nurse practitioner does not see any signs of bleeding on exam or in the blood work. What is the ne best next step? So we've got A, hold a dose and have the patient come back tomorrow for an INR check. B, lower the dose and give a dose of PO vitamin K. C, keep the dose the same and give a dose of PO vitamin K. Or D, refer to the ED for IV vitamin K and monitoring. Go ahead and pause the video if you wanna take a second. All right, let's review this one together. If the patient's INR is between five and 10 with no signs of bleeding, we are typically going to hold a dose or two and closely monitor that INR level. If there are signs of bleeding with an elevated INR level, the patient will likely need the antidote to warfarin, which is vitamin K, and should be referred to the ED if bleeding is severe. And just as a study tip here, doing practice questions after reviewing content is always a great way to apply what you've learned and help that information stick. All right, and here are the references we use for this video. Blood thinners like warfarin can be a little intimidating, but there are a few things we can do to be confident in answering these questions and prescribing these medications in future practice. Taking a thorough patient history, following guidelines, educating patients on risks, and monitoring them closely are some of the ways we can manage these medications safely. You've got this.